Genital Fistula Introduction A fistula is an abnormal communication between two or more epithelial surfaces. Genital urinary fistula is an abnormal communication between the urinary and genital tract, either acquired or congenital with involuntary escape of urine into the vagina. Types Various types of genital fistulas characterized by the affected organs. Bladder-related fistulas include Vesicovaginal fistula This is the most common type of fistula. Vesicouterine fistula Cervicovesical fistula Fistulas involving the ureter comprise Ureterovaginal fistula Ureterocervical fistula Ureterouterine fistula Urethra-associated fistula is represented by Urethrovaginal fistula Causes Obstetrical Ischemic An obstructed labor ischemic necrosis and infection causes sloughing fistula. Thus, it takes few days, 3 to 5, following delivery to produce such type of fistula. Obstructed labor can result in the trigon of the bladder being nipped between the pubic symphysis and the presenting part, leading to ischemia and subsequent necrosis. This necrosis may, in turn, contribute to fistula formation, typically occurring between the 7th and 9th postnatal days. Gynecological Operative injury likely to produce fistula includes operations like anterior calporophy, abdominal hysterectomy for benign or malignant lesions, or removal of Gardner cyst. Traumatic The anterior vaginal wall in the bladder may be injured following fall on a pointed object, by a stick used for criminal abortion, following fracture of pelvic bones, or due to retained and forgotten pessary. Malignancy Advanced carcinoma of the cervix, vagina, or bladder may produce fistula by direct spread. Radiation There may be ischemic necrosis by endarteritis obliterans due to radiation effect when the carcinoma cervix is treated by radiation. Infective Chronic granulomatous lesions such as vaginal tuberculosis, lymphogranuloma venereum, schistosomiasis, or actinomycosis may produce fistula. Clinical Features Continuous escape of urine per vaginum, true incontinence, is a classic symptom. The patient has got no urge to pass urine. Leakage of urine following surgical injury occurs from the first postoperative day, whereas an obstetric fistula symptoms may take 7 to 14 days to appear. Urethral fistula that are situated high up often presents with features of stress incontinence. Diagnosis the diagnosis is most often made from the typical history and local examination. The patient is placed in SIMS or knee chest position, and while examining the anterior vaginal wall, bubbles of air are seen through the small tiny fistula when the woman coughs. Dye test A speculum is introduced, and the anterior vaginal wall is swabbed dry. When the methylene blue solution is introduced into the bladder by a catheter, the dye will be seen coming out through the opening. A metal catheter passed through the external urethral metus into the bladder when it comes out through the fistula not only confirms the vesicovaginal fistula, but ensures patency of the urethra. Three swab test. The three swab test not only confirms the vesicovaginal fistula, but also differentiates it from uridovaginal and urethrovaginal fistula. Three cotton swabs are placed in the vagina, one at the vault, one at the middle, and one just above the introitus. The methylene blue is instilled into the bladder through a rubber catheter, and the patient is asked to walk for about five minutes. She is then asked to lie down, and the swabs are removed for inspection. If the uppermost swab is soaked with urine but unstained with dye, indicating a ureterovaginal fistula, in contrast, when both the upper and lower swabs remain dry, but the middle swab is stained with dye, it signifies a vesicovaginal fistula. Alternatively, if the upper two swabs stay dry while the lower swab is stained with dye, it suggests a urethrovaginal fistula. The investigation of choice is cystoscopy. Management. Preventive. The following guidelines are prescribed. 
Adequate antenatal care is to be extended to screen out at-risk mothers likely to develop obstructed labor. Anticipation, early detection can be done by partograph, an ideal approach in the method of delivery in relieving the obstruction. Continuous bladder drainage for a variable period of about five to seven days following delivery, either vaginally or abdominally, in a case of long-standing obstructed labor. Care is to be taken to avoid injury to the bladder during pelvic surgery, obstetrical or gynecological. Operative management. Local repair of the fistula is a surgery of choice. Preoperative assessment. Fistula status. Assessment is done as to the regards of the site, size, number, mobility, and status of the margins of the fistula. Urethral involvement is assessed by introducing a metal catheter through the external urethral metis into the bladder. To ascertain the position of the ureteric openings in relation to a big fistula, cystoscopy is indicated. Kelly's air cystoscopy. The patient is placed in knee chest position when the bladder becomes distended with air. Kelly's air cystoscopy is performed to exclude associated rectovaginal fistula or complete perineal tear. Complete hemogram and urea, creatinine, renal function, estimation are done. Preoperative preparations. Local infection in the vulva should be treated by the application of silicone barrier cream or glycerin. Urinary infection, if any, should be corrected beforehand. Definitive surgery. The ideal time of surgery is after six weeks following delivery. By this time, the general condition improves and local tissues are likely to be free from infection. Further delay is likely to produce more fibrosis and is unnecessary. It prolongs the misery of the patient. Early repair may compromise the success. Surgical fistula, if recognized within 24 hours, immediate repair may be done, provided it is small. Radiation fistula should be repaired after 12 months. Principles of surgery. Perfect asepsis and good exposure of fistula is needed. Minimal excision of scar tissue around margins should be done. Mobilization of bladder wall from vagina is recommended. Suturing the bladder wall without tension in two layers. Latsko technique is used to repair a vesicovaginal fistula that develops following a total hysterectomy operation. The principle of this operation is to produce partial copoclysis, obliteration of the vagina around the fistula. This procedure is suitable for a fistula which is small and high in the vagina. Principal steps. Vaginal mucosa is dissected off the bladder wall around the fistula site. The fistula tract is excised. Bladder mucosal edges are approximated with interrupted sutures, 2 to 0 vicral. Two additional suture layers are used to oppose the muscle and fascia. Vaginal mucosa is closed by interrupted sutures using same suture material. Continuous bladder drainage by indwelling catheter is maintained for 10 to 14 days. Saucerization, pairing, and suturing. This operation was originally devised by James Marion Sims, 1852, of the USA. He used to repair the fistula in Sims' position, exposing the fistula with Sims speculum, and, after pairing the margins, sutured the fistula with silver wire. Saucerization is the closure of a small fistula using interrupted stitches without dissection of the bladder from the vagina. This may be employed in a very small fistula using Vicryl, 2-0. Special post-operative care. Urinary antiseptics are either given at random or appropriate to the sensitivity report. Continuous blood drainage for about 10 to 14 days is done. The patient is advised to pass urine frequently, say one hour, following the removal of the catheter. The interval is gradually increased. Nursing care for fluid balance, urine output, and to detect any catheter block is needed. Advice during discharge. To pass urine more frequently. To avoid intercourse for at least three months. To defer pregnancy for at least one year. If conception occurs, report to the hospital and must have mandatory antenatal checkups and hospital delivery. A successful repair should have an abdominal delivery. If repair fails, local repair should again be attempted after three months.
That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.